Hi everyone, I'm Nupur Desai, um, an oncologist at the Cancer Vet. Today we'll be talking about multicentric large cell lymphoma in dogs, which is a very specific diagnosis. It is one of the most common um, hematopoietic tumors in dogs, but there are a lot of different types of lymphomas and we'll only be talking about large cell multicentric lymphoma. Then there's gastrointestinal lymphoma, cutaneous lymphoma, um, primary nasal lymphoma, renal lymphoma, we'll not be talking about any of those. Along with different anatomical sites of lymphoma, so there's multicentric lymphoma, there's GI and so on and so forth, there's a difference in cell type as well. You can have large cell lymphoma or small cell lymphoma. Now, these can be tested with certain molecular tests like PCR, uh, PAR, um, and the treatment is quite different. So today we'll be talking about large cell lymphoma alone. Then there's also T cell versus B cell lymphoma, uh, which has shown to be prognostic, which means that B cell lymphoma dogs tend to do better than T cell lymphoma dogs. And there are certain additional tests that we could do to see if it is B cell versus T cell. In a lot of cases, B cell versus T cell does not really change how we treat them. So if it is easily available, you can go ahead and do that. Um, if not, we can just start treatment and see how it goes. And whatever we discuss today will not directly be applied to the rest of the lymphomas. Also, we are only talking about dogs Lymphoma in cats is a completely different disease than what it is in dogs. The presentation is different, the way we treat it is typically different. Um, so here goes, multicentric lymphoma in dogs. Most of them present to us with uh, really big lymph nodes. So now lymph nodes are present in most places in the body. Uh, they're, out, they're outside as well as inside the body. So most of the times uh, we get these pets coming in with, oh, we felt while petting, we found a swelling under the neck or behind the knee. These are called as peripheral lymph nodes. The five main peripheral lymph nodes, which you can feel from outside, uh, there'll be mandibular lymph nodes under the neck, prescapular lymph nodes, which are near the shoulders, uh, axillary lymph nodes near the armpit, popliteal lymph nodes behind the knee, and inguinal lymph nodes, which are in the groin area. Most of the times these dogs will present with swelling of these lymph nodes. Once you go to a primary veterinary or you, know, you come to us, the first thing we'll do is do a good physical exam. So to see really what lymph nodes are enlarged, if we feel that there is um, something in the abdomen that is enlarged as well. And then we'll do a fine needle aspirate, which is when we put a really small needle in the lymph nodes to get a diagnosis. Typically, I like to do a fine needle aspirate of either the prescapular or the popliteal lymph node, um, which has a highest chance of giving us a, a definitive diagnosis. A lot of times, the, the minimum amount of diagnostics that are required is one being a fine needle aspirate to diagnose if this is lymphoma or not, blood work to see if there's anything else going on in the body. Uh, we could also do chest x-rays or an abdominal sonography. So just like outside, there are lymph nodes in the chest as well, because uh, as the mediastinal lymph node, the sternal lymph node and certain tracheobronchial lymph nodes. So those lymph nodes can enlarge as well um, in dogs or there can be liver and spleen involvement. So we would want to do an ultrasound as well. One very, I would say critical test is to see if the calcium level in the body is elevated. So we would do something called as ionized calcium because with lymphoma, a lot of dogs can have uh, an elevated calcium um, levels. So this is called as a paraneoplastic syndrome. I won't get too much into it, but we would want to do an ionized calcium as well. So fine needle aspirate, blood work, ionized calcium are the three critical tests to be done. If required, if we want, we can do chest x-rays and ultrasounds as well. So there are different stages for lymphoma. Stage one is maybe if there's one um, lymph node involved. Stage two would be if it is either um, cranial half, caudal half, or one side of the lymph nodes involved. Stage three is if all the peripheral lymph nodes are involved. And stage four would be if liver and spleen are also involved. I want to make a very, very critical point, very important point that even if there is liver and spleen involvement, the prognosis is quite good. 
um, the the prognosis for a stage 2 is similar to a stage 4 lymphoma and I'm only talking about lymphoma here. So if your pet has been diagnosed with lymphoma, has liver or spleen involvement, please don't not treat because you feel it's an advanced stage of disease because they do tend to do really well with, with treatment. Stage 5 would be if there is bone marrow involvement or if there is extra nodal involvement. If, if, uh, if, what that means is if there is lymph nodes everywhere but there is also kidney involvement or, or CNS, uh, central nervous system involvement, that would be a stage 5 and that does have a worse prognosis than a stage 4. But if it is a stage 4 with liver and spleen involvement for lymphoma, please go ahead and treat, they can do quite well. Now more importantly, let's get to the treatment aspect of things. So we know what type of tumor it is, we know what the stage of your pet is. Next comes treatment. So this is a systemic disease where a lot of the lymph nodes in the body are involved. You can't surgically go in and remove each and every lymph node, remove some portion of the liver or spleen. Hence, chemotherapy is the appropriate um, type of treatment that we can do for these lymphomas. Um, Usually we would do, uh, the, one of the most I would say involved protocols is the CHOP chemotherapy protocol. Now this is a protocol that's taken from the human lymphoma protocol but the way we do it in dogs is different than in humans where in dogs we would treat once every week with three different drugs alternatingly for a total of 19 weeks. And we would also give uh, steroids in the first entire month of the CHOP protocol. Typically what we notice is most dogs tolerate the CHOP protocol quite well. Um, and we've talked about the potential side effects. But um, usually after the first two to three doses, most of the dogs are in a really strong remission, which means the lymph node size goes down, their activity level increases, they're clinically doing quite well. And usually after the fourth dose, uh, they, most of them are in a complete remission. Even if they're in a complete remission, we don't stop treatment. We continue to finish the 19 weeks because if we stop treatment midway, midway um, the disease can return quite rapidly. So we give the 19 weeks of the CHOP protocol, after which we don't really keep them on any maintenance chemotherapy. Uh, we just stop any kind of treatment and we call them every month for physical examinations, um, uh, recheck examinations of chest x-rays, ultrasounds if required. If we feel that the lymph node size is increasing again, which can happen around the four to six month mark, then we can reinitiate either another round of CHOP or use certain other drugs that can be given. So that is in the rescue setting. Or if for some reason, you know, going in every week for chemotherapy is not an option, um, may it be financial, may it be the time, there are definitely other protocols that can be used. There are definitely treatments which are less involved, drugs that can be given once every three weeks instead of once every week. And um, so, so certain drugs like doxorubicin, CCNU can absolutely be given instead of the CHOP. The only caveat being the average survival is not as well as with the CHOP chemotherapy protocol. There are now two new drugs that have uh, been developed and are commercially available in the US. One of them is called Tenovia. It's given intravenously as well. And the other one is called Lavardia, which is given orally. Now, while these drugs are great, uh, they still don't replace the CHOP protocol as the first line of treatment. We can use them in the rescue setting, which means once they fail the CHOP protocol, we can use these drugs. These are unfortunately not available in India at this time. Typically what we see in lymphoma is they do great for some time, they go into a complete remission, we stop the treatment. They usually do come out of remission around the four to six month mark, and then we reinitiate chemotherapy. Um, but they start failing these chemotherapy drugs and ultimately there comes a point where they don't respond to any treatment. Usually the average survival with the CHOP chemotherapy protocol is about 12 months and some dogs live even up to two years with the therapy with a great quality of life. So if your pet has been diagnosed with lymphoma, please go on and take a consult, talk to a veterinarian, talk to an oncologist and see if that's something that you can do. 
while there's top protocol which is the most advanced i would say which is the most involved and gives us the longest survival there's definitely other protocols which would help to keep um, keep your pet comfortable if chemotherapy is something that you don't wish to do for whatever reason there you can try with steroids alone so prednisolone alone um, which can give some relief to the pet but remember you can't start steroids give it for a month and then decide to give chemotherapy because it has shown to have some resistance to chemotherapy so if you're in two minds take a couple of days think if you want to do chemotherapy or not and only then start steroids along with your chemotherapy or if you've decided not to do chemotherapy go ahead with the steroids alone in a lot of cases with lymphoma how most dogs present to us is uh, when the pet parents are uh, petting them they find the big masses under the neck or behind the legs in some cases though they do come in really sick where they are very lethargic drinking a lot of water overall not doing very well so they can be two extremes of presentation sometimes even with really big lymph nodes they come in they come in happy jumping um, eating very well almost to a point where you know they feel nothing is really wrong but even at that point if we don't treat um, normally they don't have to long to live so even if your pet is looking great and with a diagnosis of large cell lymphoma, it is important to start treatment if you want to treat quite soon. Um, otherwise, they, they can very drastically uh, deteriorate quite rapidly. So this is about multicentric lymphoma in short. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comment section. And uh, next time we'll be talking about osteosarcoma in dogs.